Sometimes I question my decisions, but it is absolutely the most glorious day outside. And I'm going to be spending the rest of it inside. So today I thought I would make a tutorial on how to make Fleur Delacour's dress. I actually made her hat in a video a while ago um, and I've decided I'm going to show you how to make the dress to go with it. So I'm setting myself a challenge. It is currently... No, can't see it. It is currently 2.25 p.m. And I've decided that I'm going to make this dress this afternoon. Is that going to happen? No. Am I hoping it's going to happen? Yes. This is gonna take a while. In the purposes of making this an interesting and fun video to watch, I've already cut out all my pattern pieces. Ow. The reason I've already cut out all of these pieces is because, let's be honest, it's the most boring part of the process. For those of you that don't know, Fleur Delacour is a student at the Beau Baton Academy of Magic. She appears in the fourth Harry Potter film in this dress. So that's what I'm going to make today. Just a quick few things. I have a sewing machine, I have an overlocker, I have pin cushions, scissors, different coloured blue threads, a measuring tape, a dress zipper, and I have bias binding and some very cute little blue buttons. For my fabrics, I have some denim slash linen cottons in varying grey blues and a pale blue satin. In the film they use silk, but my local fabric shop doesn't sell silk, so I have polyester satin instead. Now in terms of the patterns that I am using, I got these from Spotlight in Australia. If you are somewhere else, then you may have to look up where you can get your patterns. Most of these you can get online anyway, so the main pattern that I'm using is the Simplicity 8732. I am then using the Vogue 8772 pattern. I'm going to be using the top half of this, of the Vogue pattern with the bottom half of the Simplicity pattern. For the capelet that they wear over the top of their dress, I'm gonna be using the McCall 7225 pattern. I'm going to be using just the top section and the pattern piece actually like goes like down to your knee, but I'm just gonna cut it off at elbow length. So I'm gonna start by making my Vogue pattern. I have cut off the bodice pieces to like the waist length and I won't even be using that much. I should mention with the collar, in the actual picture, which I will insert now, it has like a long pointy collar. I added these kind of shaped pieces to my pattern piece to make it long and pointy. I am doing view D in the Vogue pattern. Okay, so the way I stitch darts in, this little marking that I've got in here, that is actually where the end of the dart needs to be. So now I'm just gonna stitch a triangle down there and then I'll iron it flat. Okay, so as you can see, I've done that stitching line in the dart here. I'm going to go ahead and continue following the instructions according to the pattern, and I will check in with you in a bit. I'm going to be using my overlocker to overlock the um, shoulder and side seams. All exposed seams in this dress will be overlocked. Okay, so this is what an overlocker does. So basically you just run this along the edge of the seam and you can see it comes out the other side nicely finished. So a quick time check, it is now 4.28. I've done the bodice and I'm now moving on to the sleeves and the cuff. I'm just going to be starting by basting the edges here. I think there's a little bit of gather and then I'll be attaching the cuff down here. now 6 40 p.m. the bodice is now done um, the collar didn't work out as exactly as I'd hoped this collar is not really seen because you actually have the capelet over the top which has the longer more extreme collars fingers crossed they'll work a little better <laughs> So it is 
currently day two of this sewing process. Yes, I am in the same clothes as I was yesterday because we like a bit of continuity. <gasps> I have my mannequin here. I'm going to now start assembling my bodice and skirt pieces together. There needs to be sort of like a pleat here just at the under bust. So I'm actually not going to do that until the very last minute when I'm actually stitching the skirt onto the shirt. So the way I'm actually doing this is I have pinned where the top of the skirt is. I'm going to sort of even that line up, make sure that it's all sort of even on each side. So I'm going to measure three centimeters below that pin line and then cut it. I have this gap here where I want to put in an invisible zipper. If you don't know how to put an invisible zipper in, there are so many different YouTube videos that show you how to do it. So I'm gonna put an invisible zipper in there now. And then the last thing to do on the actual dress is to put some buttons down the front and then trim the actual hem of the skirt. If you actually look at the pictures, it's just below the knee. If you wanted this to be longer, you could. If you wanted it to be shorter, you could. Um, and it's just a simple turning up the hem. I will have hemmed the skirt, put the invisible zipper in the side, and put the buttons down the front, and then the dress itself is done. Yay! Okay, so I thought I'd just sort of give you a bit of an update what I'm actually doing for the buttons. So I have put a button right at the top to secure the collar in the right place. Then I have used five because in the film she has five um, little toggle buttons on show. So I have one, two, three, four, five, all at five centimeter intervals. I've done the buttonhole on the top layer here. And now, and then I've sort of laid it flat, pinned it in place, and now I am putting the buttons on. So to move on to the little capelet. So I have a single piece for the back and I have two front pieces. So I've decided that I'm actually going to do some French seams on the capelet because it's going to kind of like flap open like this and you'll see the inside. A French seam is basically um, a covered seam so it, it means that if you do see it um, it actually looks quite nice. There's no frayed edges, there's no overlocking or anything like that. So the way to do a French seam is you actually put the wrong sides of the fabric together and you stitch one centimeter um, seam line, then you cut it right back and you fold it with, right, with uh, right sides together and then you stitch the seam again and, um, and that encloses that open edge. Um, within the seam and it just it makes it look really um really finished i just thought i'd quickly update with the collar this is the order in which you need your collars to be sitting so you have the uninterfaced neck facing then you have the normal shaped collar then you have the collar with the long pointy ends that you can see here and then on the very top layer is the interfaced collar facing I just added a small button and button loop at the top just to hold this together but you could use like a press stud or a hook and eye or whatever else. So the way I'm hemming the capelet is I've got this um, really gorgeous silk bias binding that I'm using and I'm just opening up one side. This is the right side of the fabric, so the outside. 
I've pinned it along the edge. I'm going to stitch along this fold line and then it will then fold under and to the inside and then I'll stitch it from there. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually, now I've stitched this down, I am just going to fold this end over and then fold that on the underside like that and then that will be stitched along that edge which should look really good. 